Hello and welcome to the Torque Mode Tuning Presentation. In this video we will demonstrate how to tune and run a BLDC motor in Torque Mode. A prerequisite for tuning in Torque Mode is to have already configured and run the motor in open loop, as this essential step involves setting up the motor's sensors and conducting a basic motor evaluation. If this step has not been completed, we recommend watching our open loop configuration video first. Torque mode is a closed loop control mode used to drive the motor at the desired torque. Since the torque of a BLDC motor is proportional to its current, controlling the motor's torque can be achieved by regulating its current. No extra sensors are required for the torque loop, as the drive includes its own current sensors, which measure the motor current with high accuracy at 16 kHz. Proper tuning in torque mode ensures the motor's current follows the set point swiftly and with stability. In this presentation, we will utilize a pair of Nadec BLDC motors, with their shafts coupled together, or one motor serves as a load while the other is configured and tested in torque mode. Our test setup includes a torque sensor that supports the Modbus protocol, which we will interface with the Robotech drive using microbasic scripting. Although the torque sensor is not essential for operating in torque mode, we will use it for demonstration purposes to verify that the target torque is achieved. For additional details on microbasic scripting, you can view our video tutorials or consult the how-to articles linked in the video's description. Begin by connecting to the Robotech drive using a USB and then open the Roborin Plus utility. Proceed to load the configurations from the controller. At this point, many critical parameters necessary for the motor's operation, including pole pairs, sinusoidal angle sensor, encoder resolution, etc., should already be in place. Switch the operating mode to torque mode. During the open loop configuration, we established some default values for the FOC gains to initiate motor operation. In this tutorial, we'll delve into how varying the FOC bandwidth affects the motor's torque response. FOC, which stands for field-oriented control, functions as a PI loop and is essential for current control within the motor. It fulfills a dual purpose, ensuring the motor reaches the desired current level and maximizing the torque generated from this current. This optimization is accomplished through a mathematical transformation that converts the three-phase alternating current into a time-invariant DC current, comprised of two components, ID and IQ. IQ represents the motor current that directly produces torque, whereas ID should ideally be maintained at zero to ensure maximum torque per ampere is achieved. To tune the torque loop, initiate the motor sensor and tuning wizard. The motor shaft can be either left free to rotate or locked during the tuning of the current loop. Additionally, locking the rotor during the current loop tuning can result in a less distorted current response, since it will not be influenced by the motor's back electromotive force. Choose the current loop auto-tuning option. Since the motor's characterization process, which involves calculating the motor's resistance and inductance by the drive, was already carried out during the open loop configuration, opt for manual entry. If, for any reason, the motor characterization has not been completed already, you can select auto motor characterization. Note that the motor shaft must be free to rotate during this characterization process. The calculated values will be displayed in the R, LD, and LQ fields, corresponding to the motor's resistance and inductance parameters. These values are critical for calculating the FOCPI gains, as these gains depend entirely on the motor's RL specifications. The motor RL specifications can also be configured manually by referring directly to the motor datasheet. The motor resistance and inductance phase values are required in these fields. If the datasheet provides the phase-to-phase -phase measurements, divide the value by 2. Pay attention to the units, as the utility requires millions and microhenries. Perform all the necessary conversions. Click Next to proceed. Following this step, you will be asked to select a bandwidth. The bandwidth in FOC mode influences the responsiveness of torque mode by adjusting the FOC gains by a uniform factor. Let's choose the slowest possible bandwidth of 50 Hz to observe its impact on the current response. Click Next to continue. 
At this stage, we have the capability to input a specific current waveform into the motor as a current demand and then observe the motor's actual current response. The first two parameters determine the maximum and minimum values of the current waveform. Adjust these values to plus 5 and minus 5 amps to guarantee that the set point is achieved, even with the slowest bandwidth setting. The test wave period specifies the duration of the current waveform, while the repeat count determines how many times the test waveform is replayed. Maintaining the default values for these two parameters will not affect the test's outcome and can be used as is. Proceed to adjust the chart settings by removing motor power and encoder speed from the display. This adjustment ensures our attention is concentrated on the current response. Ramp command indicates the intended current values, torque amps shows the actual current which is expected to align with the ramp command, and flux amps is intended to stay close to zero, as previously explained. Click Run Waveform to start the test. The delay in torque amps arises from the low FOC bandwidth. The persistent loop error, where the set point is not achieved, is due to the rotor's movement. Engaging the motor brake by cutting its power can eliminate this issue. However, this isn't a significant concern because, with higher bandwidth settings, the current response will be swift enough to remain unaffected by any movement of the motor. Navigate to the Current Gains tab. In this section, you have the option to test various current bandwidths and assess their impact on the motor's performance. Increasing the bandwidth from 50 Hz to 250 Hz should result in a current response that is five times faster. Selecting 500 Hz will make the response 10 times quicker, and the pattern continues with higher bandwidths. However, it's advisable to steer clear of bandwidths in the aggressive range to prevent the introduction of vibrations particularly when employing cascaded control modes that depend on torque mode for speed or position control. Leave the slider at 500 Hz, which is considered an average bandwidth value. Click Next and then Save. In dual channel drives, this step allows you to proceed with configuring the second channel. For our purposes, select No since we're only configuring one motor at this time. Then, choose Cancel as we won't be exploring the configuration of other control modes in this tutorial. Set the motor's torque constant, measured in newton meters per ampere. This value is essential for directly commanding torque instead of motor current. The drive adjusts the motor current to achieve the desired torque, using the requested torque and the motor's torque constant. Also set the motor's voltage constant, measured in volts per kilo RPM. Both torque and voltage constants can be configured by referring to the motor datasheet. Voltage constant will enable the decoupling current control of the motor. Decoupling control will enhance the motor's performance by allowing independent control of its torque and flux, thereby improving its efficiency and response time. Additionally, if the motor type is IPM, this parameter will enable the specialized control required for IPM operation. In IPM motor control, both torque and flux currents will be adjusted so that the motor can operate within the maximum torque per ampere region. The controller will automatically determine if the motor is an IPM type by assessing the LD and LQ values. Another important step before running the motor is to configure some closed loop speed PID gains. The speed loop serves to limit the maximum speed of the motor to a user defined value. Additionally, during certain faults, such as loop error or safety stop, the motor will decelerate according to a defined deceleration profile. To enable these functions, it's necessary to set the speed PID gains. However, in this tutorial, we will not delve into the tuning of the speed PID gains. Instead, we will use default values that are known to work, solely for the purpose of enabling speed limiting. For more detailed information about tuning the speed mode, please refer to the respective tutorial. Next, navigate to the speed and acceleration section and adjust the maximum motor speed. As mentioned earlier, the drive will enforce the speed limit, preventing the motor from exceeding it even if the current demand necessitates it. Then, set the desired acceleration and deceleration values. These parameters do not directly affect the motor speed, but rather control the rate at which the current command accelerates or decelerates. When a user sends a step current command, the ramped command of the current will develop based on these acceleration and deceleration values. It's worth noting that when torque mode is used, 
The units for acceleration and deceleration are expressed as millimaps times 10 per second. Let's test the motor now. Navigate to the Run tab and access the chart settings. Add the following parameters to the chart. Ramped command, which reflects the desired current multiplied by 10. FOC torque amps representing the actual current responsible for torque. FOC flux amps, which should be kept close to zero, and motor speed. Send a motor command using the slider. The command provided will be proportional to the amp's limit value, scaled from minus 1000 to 1000. Be aware that the torque amps will be equal to the desired motor amps divided by 0.707 because motor amps are an RMS value and torque amps are a peak value. Notice the alignment between the ramped command and the torque amps. Observe how the speed is regulated to the maximum configured value of 3000 RPM. Instead of providing a motor command via the slider, a torque amps request can be issued with the GIQ command. To achieve this, the watchdog timer should be disabled, otherwise, the command will reset after the watchdog timer expires. To disable the watchdog timer set its value to zero. Mute the slider as it will interfere with the provided serial commands. The units for the GIQ command are amps multiplied by 10. Feel free to test various current commands and observe the motor response. By using the GID command, the motor's flux amps can be controlled, enabling more complex functions such as field weakening. Notice how adjusting the motor flux increases the motor speed without the need to increase the motor voltage. Automatic field weakening, which allows higher speeds to be achieved without the need for manual control of IQ and ID currents by the user, is available in RoboG4 products and will be discussed in a separate video. Additional commands that can be useful for torque control of the motor include, TC command, which sets the target torque, TSL command, which sets the torque slopes, TOF command, which sets the torque offsets and TRQ query, which returns the actual torque value. You can find more information on the supported commands in the Robotech Drive's user manual. By utilizing the MicroBasic script designed to interface with the torque meter, we are able to monitor the desired torque in VAR1 and the actual torque in VAR2. For more information about the MicroBasic scripting application, please refer to the video's description. The units for both variables are expressed in Newton meters, multiplied by 100. Since the data from the torque meter is unfiltered, oscillations introduced by the mechanical setup can be observed. Nevertheless, it is clear that the torque requested matches the average value recorded by the torque meter. That concludes our demonstration. You have successfully controlled the torque of a BLDC motor by regulating its current, all while staying within the prescribed speed limits. Additionally, you have learned to send separate ID and IQ commands to perform advanced functions, such as manual field weakening. You can find the link for the guide on how to interface with the torque meter by constructing raw RS-485 frames to implement the Modbus protocol in the video's description below. Thanks for watching.